welcome back to this series of Moodle Monday videos looking at setting and grading assignments. In this episode we'll look at setting a Turnitin assignment. Turnitin assignments differ from Moodle's own assignment activity in that we're accessing an external system or cloud system when submitting or grading. Turnitin assignments are only usable for text-based assignments such as essays, reports, case studies and so on. They will not work for mathematics, technical drawing, or similar submissions using mainly markup language or some form of notation. Turnitin assignments are also unsuitable for photographic or illustration-based assignments. Turnitin assignments will check the contents of the student's work against a vast repository of other work, including sites on the internet, to check for plagiarism. Each student's submission will be given a similarity score. This allows you to see how much of the text in the assignment is identical to other work, whether on the web or submitted by other students, anywhere in the world where Turnitin is being used. The similarity score is only a guide. It's quite possible to have a high similarity score if you're including a lot of quoted material. Or you may be asking the student to react to a book chapter which is included in the submission text. So it's very important to treat each similarity report individually, depending on the purpose of the assignment. With that out of the way, let's add a Turnitin assignment to our course. Back in our familiar test course, where we have previously looked at setting up and grading a Moodle assignment, switch on editing in your course if it isn't already on. Now click add an activity or resource and find Turnitin assignment. General settings. Give the assignment a meaningful name as we discussed in the last video. Please note that only 40 characters are allowed, so we need to be more concise this time. Provide detailed instructions on what you expect the student to do. Although we mention a supporting document, it's not possible to provide this within the Turnitin assignment, so we'll need to place it in the course area like this. You can choose to display the description on your course page, however, this can lead to the course page becoming too busy. The submission types are the same as Moodle, text and or file submissions. If there's more than one part to your assignment, in other words, you expect more than one file, then set the number of parts here. The maximum file size allowance is lower than the built-in assignment due to Turnitin being a cloud system. Anonymous marking allows blind marking of students' work if this is required. Leave student originality reports set to yes. Turn in advanced options. As with Moodle assignments, you can allow late submissions. If you have a strict cutoff date, leave this set to no, otherwise change to yes. Leave the rest of the settings in this area at the defaults. Grade. In grade, as in our previous example, we set to point with a maximum grade of 100 to allow us to use percentages for the pass mark and grades. Set maximum grade to 100 and the grade to pass whatever's required by your unit specification. A grade to pass of 50 represents 50% 50 pass mark. Common module settings. In this area, you can choose to hide the assignment from students until the date the assignment opens, if the contents of the assignment are a secret. If not, you can leave this set to show on course page. There is no need to change any other settings. We've discussed restrict access and activity completion in other videos, and we do not use the tags feature. Click save and return to course to see your Turnitin assignment in place. As you can see, the assignment is now shown on the course page. You can now switch off editing if you prefer. You will note that we haven't set a start date yet. Click on the Turnitin assignment to open it. There are four tabs on this page. Summary, Submit Paper, Submission Inbox 
and options. In summary, you can see the assignment question. Ignore turn it in tutors. At the bottom of the summary, you can see the assignment part one with the start date, due date and post date with the maximum marks available. To set the start, due and post dates, click the notepad pencil icon. Now we can change the name of the part and set the three dates. Start date is the date the assignment becomes available to the student to submit. The due date is the date you expect the submission to be in by. This can be strict or not as discussed earlier. The post date is very important. This is the date the students will receive their grades and feedback. If you wish to give all students grades and feedback at the same time, set the post date to give yourself time to mark all of the submissions. In this example, I've set the assignment to open at 10am. It should be submitted by 3pm and the marking should be complete by 4pm. This is an extreme example, but this will show the workflow for a Turnitin assignment without having to wait for days. When you've made your changes, click Submit. This will now need to sync with Turnitin's servers. Wait for a few moments for this to take effect. You can see that the new dates are set. In Submit Paper, you can upload a document or text submission on behalf of a student. This is helpful if a student has misunderstood how to submit, perhaps emailing their work to you, perhaps they've no internet connection or have supplied the work on a USB stick. You should encourage students to submit their own work if they're capable of doing this. In Submission Inbox, you see a list of the students on the course and their submissions, along with the submitted date, similarity percentage and grade. As no papers have been submitted yet, there is nothing to mark at this point. Leave the Options tab alone for now. Student View Now let's look at the student's view of the Turnitin assignment. We are logged into the test course as a student. To get started, the student should first open the Turnitin assignment. The summary is shown. To submit, the student clicks on the My Submissions tab then they choose between file upload and text submission. Mooncake will be submitting online text. The student then has to check the box to state that this is their own submission, then submit. Ask your students to be patient when they submit, as Turnitin is a cloud service and internet speed is a factor. The status field now shows that the submission was successful. To view the submitted work, the student may click on the title. They may be presented with a user agreement screen the first time they use Turnitin. They should click I agree to continue. Upon first load, there is a short tour of the feedback studio, which students may choose to view or skip. Upon loading, Mooncake has discovered that there is a 100% match to their text. To view the source of the match, they click the Match Overview button. It may take some time for the match information to load. This confirms that the content was copied from kids.britannica.com. Now Billy Bob will submit a file, as in the Moodle assignment. Again, the student must tick their own work agreement and then add submission. Once they've uploaded their file, they can view and turn it in studio by clicking the title. As you can see, Billy Bob's file has also been copied from an internet source. The student can close the window to return to the assignment page. Time related issues. It's common for us to receive tickets and emails stating that Turnitin will not work in a particular course due to a conflict with dates. This is because the Turnitin activity was created so long ago that the system is unable to reopen it because it's expired. The way to fix this error is to delete all of the Turnitin assignments in the current course, then wait for a few hours. This gives our system time to communicate with Turnitin to deactivate all of the assignments in the current course. 
after two or three hours, you should be able to come back to your course and begin to add Turnitin assignments again. Don't worry about losing students' work, as the site is archived every July. If a Turnitin assignment is causing an error, it's often very old and it's quite safe to delete. Thank you for watching this Moodle Monday episode. Next time we'll look at grading a Turnitin assignment. In the meantime, if you have any questions, please get in touch with the learning and teaching team.